Awo. Salam Tana Aina Yist Erling. Greeting. This is Wendem Yado. This is Aras Yadinos Tefari. And this is um the Shabitical Sabbath portion reading and feedings of Rasafari Sabbatical readings and feedings or the RSS Rasafari Sabbath Studies. The Sabbath studies for the thirteenth. Very interesting this particular Sabbath. Because this particular Sabbath um, from eve to eve, from the evening to the evening, which is from this year, 2012, was Friday the 13th. And this particular Sabbath or sabbatical portion is also known as the 13th, which is known as Shemot in the Hebrew, Bamarinya in the Royal Amharic of Kedamawi Haila Salase's Metav Kedus, it's known as Orit Ze Se'at, which is translated as Exodus or the coming out. Very, very interesting and a very, very important um, book. And it's sort of an initiation, it's a preparation. And this is why this particular book is is key for us, especially for Ayana as the Rastafari, as the Rastafari, and for all Ethiopian Hebrews, especially in this present time. Oh, and you know you know the song, right? Turn this up a little bit. Oh. Mm-hmm. No fire. Yes, this is the song, brothers, and this is the Shaba. Simu, 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 simu. This is the reasoning, and this is the meditation right here. Men and people will fight you down when you see your life. Mm-hmm. If you're not wrong, then everything is all right. Dehna, dehna. In ya dehna nen? Are we well? Are we saved? Are we in the salvation of the King of Kings and His Christ? We are this generation, my brothers and sisters tried into this present time of great tribulation. This is a year, a very interesting year, and perhaps it will be a year unlike any other year, 2012. Now, as we've been saying, this is the Exodus sabbatical, and we're posting this. We're going to post this for the, for the Sunday. This is probably on the first day of the week. Now, there's a very important reason why um, Sunday gathering is important and was a part of the Hebraic, the Hebraic cipher. We have to really open eye and eye eyes. We have to look within. And in the meditation and in the life that we're living, are we satisfied? Do we know where we're going? Do we know where we're from? Are we preparing to leave Babylon? And are we prepared to enter into the Promised Land. This is the book that, not just this book, this right here is the most recent um, publication that we have available, which is the, um, the book known as Shemot, or the Hebrew Book of Exodus, the Hebrew Book of Exodus, which is a companion to the previous book, the first book in Torah, which is known as Bereshit, or Berasit, Bereshit, as many would say, this book is Shemot in the Hebrew, and it begins Wele Wele Shemot or Vele Shemot. These are the names, 
and hopefully we'll be able to go through uh, perhaps a series of uh, reasonings on this particular book. So brothers and sisters, grab your pen and your paper, get your journal, get your sacred scripture, bring a a willing and an, and and a and a repentant mind, a mind that's willing to to be transformed by the renewing of it in the teaching of the King of Kings and his Christ and to be free. This is what this book is about in Burhan Selassie's song, Exodus. This particular song, as you probably already know, is a very, very important meditation. But behind this song, behind this particular song, there's a whole teaching. And this is, this is the time that we're beginning the study of this. And hopefully, brothers and sisters and fans out there and communities and even churches and ministries and, and others out in I and I community, the spiritual community in particular, the Rastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrew community, this is the book that we're studying right now, the second book. And it's the 13th um, Parsha or Sabbatical portion the 13th portion in this cycle. Now, look at the correspondence for a moment. The fact that this is the 13th reading, and in 2012, it was Friday the 13th, which for Babylon and for Babylonians and, and others, is a, it's superstitious. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole big superstition. There's a phobia. But for us as Ethiopian Hebrews, there are 13 months of sunshine. And even in the Israelite overstanding, the number 13 is also very, very significant. Christ and his 12 disciples. And he in the center would be that 13th one. Now, the book of Exodus, this is what we're going to touch on, and it's a beautiful song, Bar Marley's Exodus, the movement of Yahweh's, of Jah Rastafari's people. And so we greet you, Jah Rastafari, in the name of Jesus Christos, Getachina Med Hanatachin, because Christ, Jesus Christos, is the is the access key for all the true sons and daughters of his imperial majesty for all the true rastafari and it's not i and i that say that alone it is the king of kings that says that concerning the importance of his christ so my brothers and sisters let's get into his teaching now exodus what is exodus all about let's deal with this as we said this is the this is the new scribe and we, we consider these books right here to be, this is the second of the Torah portions. The first one was Bereshit or Bereset or Berasit, and we had touched on that for the past 12. Now we're at the first book of, or the first chapter, the first reading of the second book, and the second book is known as Exodus. So this is what we're going to study on. Now, Exodus we thought we just would speak a little bit more on this interesting correspondence. You understand know, that this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, um, covers. Let's put this up here for a moment. Um, and we're at uh, the RSS, right? This is the RSS, the Rastafari Sabbath Studies, number 13. It's number 13. Now, this particular year, 2012, this 13th portion is read, or the, the, the um, prescribed um, day for it is the Friday evening, and Friday was known as Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, the 13th sabbatical portion, Sabbath reading and feeding. And what is it called? It's called... It's called Shemot. It's called Shemot. Shemot be Ibrahist in the Hebrew. But now here's what's very interesting. Though it's called Shemot in the Hebrew, it's known as as Sir or 
is known as Simoch Balmarinha. Simoch Balmarinha. And we have, uh, um, you can say right here, uh, she, uh, Mold. Is this correct? Shimot. Nah, -uh, we didn't put the vowels in, but Shimot. So this is Shimot. This is the Hebrew. And this is Simoch. This is the Amharic. Now, if you've already downloaded the particular the particular uh, update of our Sabbath House readings from LOJSociety.org under the Sabbath, the, the weekly Sabbath readings, or the Sabbath weekly, the weekly portions to be read by the Shabbat, and if you go to right here, this is where we're at right now. This is where we're at right now, the number 13th, right? We're at the 13th portion, which is known as uh, Shimot. You understand Shimot, or Shimot, some say, but Shimot. So you can hear between the Hebrew and the Royal Amharic, you can see the correspondence in Shemot and Simoch. This means, now this means right here, this means the names. We're going to touch on this a little bit more, and hopefully everyone has downloaded, all the disciples at least, have been able to download and print out a copy, the print out a copy of both that as well as the, um, the calendar the calendar and take a take a look at the holy days the page we have on the holy days the significant holy days because what's approaching that we recall i think is passover fasica is is shortly approaching and we hopefully will be able to also bring forward a teaching upon that and hopefully ones are studying these things and the redundancy is also very important going over these particular teachings and if some of y'all can download these vids and even you know distribute them and share them with others who are willing who are willing to learn please do or even post it up on your pages please feel free or even if some are more creative and can take the audio part of this some of the teachings and add the appropriate you know imagery as we've done in other vids you know saying and we hopefully will do again also please feel free um, to do so as well. Now, Shemot means, quote, Shemot means the names. Now, this means the names. This is what this basically means, the names. Hebrew, the royal Amharic. So this is, this is the portion, and this is known as now, this is what's interesting, it's known as Exodus. Right? This is known as Exodus, right? Or Bamarinya in the world of Mark of the Mets of Caduce of Haile Selassie the First's Bible, the authorized Amharic Bible. It is known as Orit, which is the original for Torah, Orit Ze Se'at, or Orit. Zeh-Zeh-At, or the Orit Zeh-Zeh-At. Some might spell it like Zeh-At, or even a T-Z. Some might prefer to spell it with a T-Z because the, the sound is not Zeh, regular Zeh, but it's the Zeh. Se'at, orit ze se'at, orit ze se'at, orit ze se'at. And that means the Torah of, ze of, the se'at, or the coming out, the, the Torah of the coming out, the Torah of the, that's the idea now of the Exodus. Now the true Exodus for those of us who are born again in the true teaching of his majesty and his true gospel, the true coming out is in the way of the Moshiach, the Mashiach of Jesus Christos. 
is in Christ, is in that name, in Yeshua, Jesus Christos. That is, that is the important name. And the King of Kings reminds us in his teaching and in the good news of his imperial majesty of the importance of his Christ, of Christ, of the Bible, of the teachings, and of the practice. See, we have to learn and we have the practice to do. But the first key is to learn. This is why the teachings are so important, to have the teachings available and have the teachings properly taught so ones have the opportunity now to decide for or, if they choose, against. But to, to make a clear decision based on the facts. So we're doing the math, and you do check the facts. We're doing the, presenting this math, and now check the facts. Now, once again, we're just thinking again the fact that this Sabbath, beginning from the eve to the eve, began from Friday the 13th, and this is the 13th, um, this is the 13th sabbatical uh, reading and feeding corresponding to Friday the 13th, and this is the very exact time of the Shabbat time. So 2012 as well, in addition to that. All of this is a very interesting correspondence, and we just meditate in the spirit and the truth and ask the Almighty to show us if there's any significance to this. So this is what we shared. If some of you all might have observed that, others might not have noticed that the sabbatical portion is the 13th, and the time of this 13th Sabbath began on Friday the 13th. So just, you know, do the math and check, check the facts. So Shemot, this part of Shah, or this portion, this Kufa, means names. It's the second word, but the first distinctive word of the Kufa when we study this from the Hebraic perspective. Now, someone had asked, why do we still, um, uh, brethren, I think it was a brethren, um, I think it was a sister, but I just remember I just checked this particular, yes, one of the brethren, I think, had asked, like, why do we just, we should just use the Amharic straight up, we shouldn't even business with the Hebrew when we look at how that, that, that covenant, you understand, was, was, was taken from old Israel and was given to the faithful of Ethiopia. You have to remember that, along with Minulik and Azarius and the priests and the Ark of the Covenant, went 1,000 Israelite males of the 12 tribes of Israel, firstborn, it was said to be firstborn sons. Now, this is significant because this means that we are not just Ethiopian, but we are Ethiopian Hebrew. And, and, and the Hebrew is not just theirs. So even though a book like this has compilations, mainly compilations from sites like Wikipedia and other um, fairly reliable sources to give us a basic ground level introduction. This is why we utilize these teachings, you know, some of the Judaic, the European Jewish teachings. And we put the disclaimer here that the views that are presented in this volume are not necessarily our own. But we, we find that it's important for us to at least get acquainted. And now as we go into the Schofield Study Bible, the Metz of Kedus, the Kovar Neges, and we go into various other um, reference sources that come from our root and our truth, we can know the, the fullness. We can know the whole story and learn the other half and recognize what our half is and then put together the full picture. You know what I'm saying? So we should not, you know, do the bias that they did to us. We, we, we cannot get even with the wicked. Because if we get even with them, we'd be just like them. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we stoop down to, we must always take that higher road. You know what I'm saying? That way of Christ. Now Christ, Jesus Christos, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, the Moshi, he is that way for us. So he truly is the exodus when we come to the overstanding. But see, Torah and, the, and these um, sabbatical portions are like, in a sense, basic training. It's, it's like a basic training. And in this particular portion, the 13th portion, which is Shemot, which begins the book of um, Exodus for us, we had come across somewhere where they said that this book is like an initiation. It's 
something, they had mentioned that this book was like an initiation. And we had come to that conclusion from our own experience. But, you know, you know, when you're thinking something and you say, yeah, that's interesting, and you keep it to yourself, and then there's a, a, a resonance or reverberation of the same thought or the same truth from elsewhere, and that becomes like a confirmation, especially when you kept these things in spirit. You understand? So none, none could know these things. So it said, I think it was right around here, forget the exact space in this particular book, but they had mentioned, I thought it was at the end of the Shimo portion. Yeah, right here. I have it right here. It's um, on page 79 of this new book, which is the Shimo, which is the companion, this right here, which is the companion to the Bereshit, and it's the second, it's the, it's the Torah portion, volume two, which now covers this second book, or Exodus, as the first one, Bereshit, the Hebrew book of Genesis, covered the Genesis um, Torah portion, readings and feedings. Now, here under the weekly uh, Makam, it says in the, in the weekly Makam, Sephardi Jews. Now, the Sephardi Jews are more, we can say, closer to us as the Ethiopian Hebrew. They're more of the indigenous Jew, uh, Hebrew, ethnic the, the, the ethnic part, while the Khazars and the European Jews at best were converted at various times to another form of Judaism. But many of them, even so, many have been faithful. Now, we know there's these others that like the, you know, like some of these um, New World Order um, uh, pretenders, so forth and so on, who are crypto Jews? They're not. They utilize the title of Jew, but they are, as the scripture says, they call themselves, but they are not. But there are many who may not be black Hebrews or Jews, who, because of their walk with the truth of the word, still are accepted with our Father and hopefully with the Moshiach. Although some still do not know our black Lord and Savior, but this is why the preaching and the teaching is so very important. Now, here's the portion which is the weekly makam. Now, the makam, just explain makam. The makam, the, the Jews, modern European Jews have adopted this from the Muslims, but the Muslims and the Arabs actually adopted this from the Ethiopian Hebrew. So it's interesting how some of these traditions, you understand, actually. We may think it's them, but it actually comes from our own roots. And it's only when we get to familiar with what they say and then study study it to you know to know it for ourselves, get to know the truth for ourselves, then we find out, oh, whoa, 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 the root is really coming from our ancestry. They may have added this, this, whatever here, so from so on. But basically, it's coming from our own root. So um, the makam is like a particular type of chanting. There's certain chanting that is used like within the Shabbat services in more congregational and communities that are gathered together. Some of this Torah portion would be would be chanted, you know, within their in their community, the Hebrew. For us, the world Amharic is what we are seeking to work on. This is why the Amharic Bible, homeschooling, seeking to familiarize our brothers and sisters with the Amharic language as well as, and this is the key thing, that it's not difficult, that it is attainable. Because many think, oh, it's too difficult, or I'll wait to Ethiopia, or they keep pushing it off. You understand? Instead of recognizing that kes be kes in kulal be igru yihedal. In other words, little by little, even an egg walks, if you understand that that um, misale, that that proverb, that simile, that inkokalish. All right. Now, here it says the weekly makam is a certain form of chanting. So for different holy days or for different times and different portions of scripture have different type of chanting. You know, there's in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church or the Ethiopic church, more correctly, the Tawahido, Beta Christian, there's three modes of chanting. There's known as Ge'ez, there's what they know as um, um, Izl, and there's Ararai, Ararai, Ararai. 
Now, the is is a plain, straight form of chanting. Uh, the ism is a, a certain sort of um, allergic, allergic, uh, allergic, like, like a lamentations, you know? Like if you listen to Burhana Selassie, Bob Marley songs, some songs are, are like, like straightforward, you understand? While some songs are, are, there's a suffering, like a sufferer, you know, that sufferer voice, that's the ism form of chanting. Um, that's the emotion that is conveyed by that style of, of, of chanting or intonation. And then you have the ararai. The ararai is more of a, 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 a sweet kind of falsetto, um, kind of heavenly sort of, it's a, it's a kind of a heavenly sort of chanting. In a sense, you could almost equate it a little bit with the um, certain styles of Gregorian chanting, if you, if you over what I mean. So there's different styles of chanting. So the makam is also, this is what the makam is. So there's a weekly makam, a portion of the service where the, the, the scripture is chanted. So it says here on page 79 that the Sephardi Jews, who are the Spanish Jews, and then there's a link with the Moors, and both the black Hebrews and the black um, 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 Ishmaelites and Arabs and Mohammedans, there's, there's a link in Spain with black culture. This is, this is to be well known as well as Middle Eastern you understand, um, and even Ethiopian culture in Spain. So that's where the Sephardi Jews, that's kind of, kind of the connection. Also, you have some of the other ethnic groups that are connected. They're the opposite of the Ashkenazi. The Ashkenazi is more the European Jews. Now here it has a word, a note, that in the weekly Makam, Sephardi Jews each week, they base the songs of their services on the content of that week's parsha. So they base their particular songs that they would sing within their gatherings are based on what that week's Torah portion reading and feeding is. So they, they would derive inspiration, you understand, from that. It says, for parsha shemot, for this particular first portion of Exodus, which comprises Exodus chapter um, one and one to Exodus chapter six and one. If I if I stand um, correct on that, let me just check this out. Some of y'all probably saying yes, but I just want to make sure. Okay, yeah, Exodus one and one to six and one. It says that the Sephardi Jews um, apply makam ras. The makam um, that shows, now this particular makam, um, this particular, um, you could say this particular, not the style, but this particular um, um, expression, let's say expression, um, it shows a beginning or an initiation of something. So when we was going over this, we, we saw that, we said this was interesting, and, we, and we're happy that we're able to share this, that, that the way the Sephardis treat, the Sephardi um, um, Jews or Hebrews, who they would say are the more, um, the more ethnic or black, if they don't say black, they'll say more non-European, tend to say Middle Eastern, African kind of um, is their background, the Sephardi um, Jews, um, that their, their mock, um it shows a beginning or initiation of something that is for this particular book, this particular portion that we are, we are currently um, um, reasoning on. In this case, it is appropriate because we are initiating the book of Exodus. So the editors of this particular page here from the Free Encyclopedia basically said that they, they kind of second that motion because we are initiating. And so we, we read this. The idea, they don't give you a whole lot of commentary, but just the, the key ideas give you an opportunity to meditate just even on that. This is what we find um, these compilations, you know what I'm saying, um, very important. And like we said, this is the second book, and we hope to have all five volumes. And if Yah wills, in the name of Jesus Christos, we would like to then go over these teachings 
and present them in our own five books that will cover more the Ethiopian Hebrew in light of the truth found elsewhere. So it might derive certain points from traditional Jewish teachings that we find to be correct, such as the point we just mentioned, as well as other aspects from our own um, um, root and source, Ethiopian Hebrew documents and, and, and in the Gutters and the Amharic language. But the main point is that this is a, a beginning or initiation of something. So the Sephardi Jews have it right, that this book and this uh, Shemo is the beginning and the initiation of something. We are initiating here the book of Exodus. And this particular um, portion right here uh, of this teaching, we'll call this the initiation, the initiation of the book of Exodus, Exodus being the movement of Jah's or of Yah's people. So, brothers and sisters, stay, stay tuned. Much more to come, Yah willing, all right? We're going to get into some of this a little bit more and take it to the next level of this, all right? So stay tuned.